Spring began on Friday. And before that, we already had seen and heard some signs of spring. The daffodils, unless they're jonquils, the robins, the spring ones, not the winter ones, they look the same, the cardinal trying out his spring song. And we've also heard the news reports of the swallows returning to Capistrano. The traditional day for that is on the 19th of March, which is St. Joseph's Day. And then there is Buzzards Day in Hinckley, Ohio, the 15th of March, when the buzzards return. It should properly be vultures, of course, but we've addressed that before and will not do so here. But of all the... New World harbingers of spring, they are but upstarts compared to the sign of spring that has been talked about, sung about, written about, and anticipated for centuries. (coughs) On any list of universally known birds, the cuckoo is near the top. We find him in folk song and legend, in Chaucer and in Shakespeare, in story and song from Western Europe to Japan. It is the cuckoo which is representative of the arrival of spring and has been for many centuries. We're talking here of the European cuckoo, Cuculus canoris. You'll notice that the genus name echoes the call of the bird, as do the common names of this bird in almost every language that refers to the cuckoo. Further, the bird has supplied a word to the English language. That word is cuckold, which the Oxford Dictionary traces back several centuries. It refers to a man whose wife is unfaithful, and it derives from the cuckoo's habit of laying its eggs in other birds' nests. Ornithologists call this brood parasitism, with the cuckoo being an obligate brood parasite, never building its own nest. Ogden Nash explains it all very nicely. Cuckoos lead bohemian lives. They fail as husbands and as wives. Therefore, they cynically disparage everyone else's marriage. But it is not the domestic behavior of the cuckoo that interests us today. It is the bird as a harbinger of spring, a sure sign that the renaissance of the season is underway. Which Shakespeare observed in Midsummer Night's Dream, as follows, The finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain song cuckoo gray, whose note full many a man doth mark, and dare not answer nay. 